and welcome. I want to show uh, something new that's just finished. That's 99% done. Just have uh, a little bit more to do to it. But it's my new design for a flow-through worm bin. There's a few things I did a little bit differently than uh, you see um, a lot of them. First off, the uh, whole outer skin, everything that you see right through here, is all three eighths of an inch PVC sheeting. So that way it's uh, we should do pretty good against the weather and stuff like that. You know, I tripled it right here on the edges so uh, to get a little bit more thickness, have a little bit better of a drip edge. And all hardware, when practical, was made out of uh, stainless steel, just like that hinge right there. Let's give you a quick overview. Right here on the side, I have uh, on both sides, I have three three inch louvered vents. Go. Like I said, they're on both sides, and then at the top, I have one three-inch lure vent right there. I put the lid on a slant for two purposes. First purpose is to help uh, the weather, leaves, everything like that, just uh, rain all come off. Second is so uh, the uh, any heat that rises on the inside will will be uh, forced towards the uh, high point, so it can come out through either the three-inch. And if you look in the back, you might be able to see it. I have uh, three more two and a half inch vents, so a total of five vents on the top. Well, I'm showing the back, if you might be able to tell, uh, I have two two by two PVC sheeting right here screwed in with a three eighths, inch, three eighths of an inch groove cut into it. So that way, if I ever want to take the, uh, the top off, all I have to do is unhook the front, lift it up, and they'll slide right on out. So for ventilation, once again, I get the th six, three on each side, three inch vents, a three inch vent at the top, and three, two inch, two and a half inch vents in the back. And that's covered with the, um, I can't really see it too well, so I put the camera over there. It's a, uh, a soffit vent, aluminum, and I got it pop riveted in there. And then up there, you see the uh, stainless steel hinge. For the most part, it doesn't look like it's uh, much different from most that you've probably seen, other than uh, being made out of PVC. But I have also on both sides, I have uh, little rubber pull downs. So basically, to unhook the top, I just pull down like that, and then I can raise the top. I got one on both sides. Those are black because it's not, I couldn't find something like that in stainless steel. It's just uh, galvanized metal. So I paint them with. Uh, rust oleum paint, try to make them last a little bit longer. And this blue tape is to help hold the bottom door because that, that's the one thing I still have to do yet is put a catch on that. Let's look in the bottom. Okay, this is where some of it changes. I have to use two hands here for a second. Since I don't have a catch, I'm using my tape. Okay, I got to zoom out a little bit. Like I guess I'm going to have to build a catch to hold that, but right here you see my doors open. And I have three quarter inch R4 insulation in the door. I look on the inside, and here you see three quarter inch nuts, and that's how I'm going to harvest them. When I get a harvest, I can just take a three quarter inch socket, or in this case, I can use this tool right here, and I just put it on here and, and turn and my casting should fall down. And down here I got a little tray system. And they all just fall right into this tray. It still needs to be cleaned out. I just got done building this, so there's still some dust and PVC sheets. You can see the three holes on that side, three on that side for the ventilation. And to keep the door down and closed, I have magnetic catches on both sides. And for extra insulation on the bottom, I have R10 2 inch insulation on the left, right, and then all the way in the back, you can see a little bit of pink. That's R4 as well. So we have R4 in the front and the back, and I have uh, R10 on the sides. Okay, well, that's it for the outside. Let me uh, open it up and show you what's on the inside. Okay, as I open it, you may notice something a little bit different. I made a little bit of a catch system. You see over here. So as I lift it up, 
on both sides. They fall right into the catches. So that way it holds the lid up. Now I can just use two hands. I can put one on both sides and then flip as I lift the lid I can flip it up and push it farther back. I can raise it up a little farther. Use two hands here for a second. And then right there I put it in a little hole I have another piece of PVC sheeting that really locks it in. That way you get pretty good broad opening. And here you get the inside look at it again. I got the R10 2 inch insulation on both sides in the back. You see here the three two and a half inch holes and here's the uh, three inch holes on the sides. And that's close up of the catch for the uh, tie down. What this is, this is uh, a fiberglass push rod for a Mulcator airplane. And I just use a little clevis. And this here is a uh, wing skid or tail skid from made out of nylon. And then I got R10 insulation on the top. Still have the tape on here in case this doesn't hold on my fastening system. If it doesn't, shows it's not going to stay. Then what I'll do is I'll put some stainless steel screws or washers all the way through it to hold it up. But look, so far, so good. Now let's take a look down inside. Now when we look on the inside, what you see down here is 2x2 two two PVC um, material. And I cut it into over 3 inch sections. That way I was able to drill a hole, half inch hole down the middle of it and put one half inch threaded rod through it. And then since putting it back together, I just uh, used PVC cement, cemented these together, and on the inside, I have a polyurethane glue, uh, Gorilla Glue, as some people know it as. It expands, it really locks it into that pipe. So when I turn those nuts, the uh, you can see that should break it up real well. And it all should fall down in there. Now on the sides here, you might notice it's kind of thick. It's actually uh, three and a half inches on the inside, void inside. So I have one sheet of two inch R10 insulation, and I have two layers of the three quarter inch, like I use that here, of R4. It gives me an R18 on all four sides. And that should help keep the uh, worms uh, nice and comfortable in the winter, and hopefully it won't hold in too much heat in the summer. We'll see. Uh, right now, I believe the, the insulation and all this ventilation should help. It's quite deep. It's just about 24 inches deep. So I should have enough volume here to be able to help keep them cool. And if uh, I need a little extra ventilation other than these holes, I always have the option of putting one more on each side. Or I keep these blocks here. And what I'll do is I'll put one on each end. And then that way when I lower it, And it blocks on that. That'll leave the lid cocked open so that I can get extra ventilation out of the way. Well, just some uh, different ideas. Once again, it's all made out of uh, PVC sheeting, except for I use treated lumber on the legs. That's the only part that's exposed is down here. And that's never in contact with any of the compost. It's as it's all encased in PVC. And it's got two coats of uh, exterior grade latex primer and one coat of latex exterior grade uh, paint with uh, fungicide built into it. And then I use uh, standard 2x2s two two and 2x4s two for the rest of the structure that's on the outside. With the door closed, once again, the only thing should be exposed to any weather down here. So I wanted this to be as maintenance proof as possible. This PVC sheeting is really nice. It's made by a brand called Comax or Coma and uh, three, three eighths of an inch sheet. It's not cheap but it's exterior grade so we'll see how good that holds up. Well I'll be putting in some uh, castings and stuff in here real soon to see how it turns out and I hope to give someone some good ideas. Thanks for joining me.